Well, welcome to Fast Talk. Today we're joined by Dr. Perry Berry of the Queen Creek Unified School District. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Chris. Glad to have you here. Today we're talking a little bit about the growth in the district. Yeah. Um, you guys are going out for a bond. Tell us what that means and, and how that works. Yeah, so uh, we uh, this past year, as you may or may not know, we, we called for a bond that would have taken care of the capital growth throughout the build out of the district, uh, about a 10 to 11 year bond. The bond failed and we just so happened to be the fastest growing district in the state by far. Um, and so our board had a decision to make whether to go for the bond again or take a year off or whatever. They did some polling, uh, talked it over at several board meetings, and they decided to call for another bond. Bonds build schools and buy buses and just the facilities, the capital, what we call the capital improvements, uh, renovation, new space. And that's really the heart and soul of our our problem. It is a problem, but it's a good problem. We were just chat, uh, chatting earlier. Well, um, we're, we're growing, which, which reflects excellence. So a lot of people are choosing our district, um, but we're out of space. We have enviable class sizes. We keep our class sizes really low in Queen Creek. And so these bonds pay for the, the, the facilities. They build new schools, they buy land, they buy buses to keep those adequate um, class sizes the way we want them. Now, it's a little confusing because sometimes we talk about the interplay between M&O and capital. And that's the situation our board is in right now is that um, whether you have facilities or not, families continue to choose our district. And so we're in a position where the only way and you know, many of our facilities starting next year, we're going to have some portables, um, which are basically two classroom trailers that we install at each of our campuses. And so we're trying to limit that, but to keep those class sizes down, we have to have um, space. And the way you pay for those portables is from your M and O budget. So it's a little M and O is maintenance and operations. operations, and that's a little confusing because you're using your M and O budget because you have no capital. You have very limited capital to pay for a capital expense. So your M and O budget is usually, um, you know, we want it to go towards salaries and benefits of our staff. It's for the people that we employ, and that really is something we've done a great job with is protecting that budget. But now we're in a position where we see our demographic projections almost exceeding every year. Our, our growth projections are exceeded by these just families that are choosing us. And so we have to make a decision how to, you know, use that M&O money to pay for these portables. And we don't want to do that if we don't have to. Right. So a bond buys you everything you can touch. Yes. Buildings, mm -hmm. buses, yeah. That's stuff That's a good way to inside. describe it, yeah. And M&O pays for your people and the maintenance yes. and all of the things to keep stuff going. That's correct. So, and part of the problem that we have is uh, Queen Creek recently named the third fastest growing community I in the nation. That, yeah. um, and of course, then um, along with that goes our school districts. Yeah. Um, so Queen Creek serviced by um, what, three districts, four districts yeah. um, and charter schools. Yeah. Um, Queen Creek Unified being the most central and the biggest piece of that. Yeah. And so you're seeing more and more kids come in. Yeah. Um, and I know you've built a couple of schools and it seems like as soon as you build them, um, they're, they're full, yeah. full already. Um, and so how many schools are you looking to build? So this, well, at build out, let me talk to, about that in two ways. I'll stop, talk about the we look at a, we use a company called Applied Economics. They, sh they look at our 10-year uh, projections and enrollment growth. Um, and so we, we could probably see another seven to eight elementary schools. We're finished with our high school settings. We just got to complete those campuses. Um, but with this bond, specific to this bond, we have enough capital money in there to buy two more elementary schools, uh, finished Eastmark High School, finished Crisman High School, and a retrofit for um, Queen Creek High School, which, by the way, was built a long time ago with SFB monies for about 1,200 students, and now there's over 2,300 students at that school. So, you know, this, this bond, the, it's only part of the puzzle. We, we use bond monies, and we couple it with what we call school facilities board money. So we apply through the state. Um, it's a formula-driven equation that gives you growth monies, but it's a very long, arduous process, and it takes a lot of time. In fact, they don't, you don't qualify 
for that money until you're over capacity. And now with everything, it takes almost two years to build those schools. We've been very, very successful. The public should know that we've been very successful in attaining a lot of uh, SFB money um, and, and to buy la the land and to build the schools. And we couple that SFB money with our bond authority to, to create adequate square footage in front of these students and, and their families. And so, Right, so in Arizona, two ways to build schools yes, for sir. public schools. Um, you get money from the state, yep. or you go to the local people in the district and say, we need money, and they tax themselves to build schools. Yes, sir. And the way the school facilities board works with the state, um, you may not get money when you need it. You just mentioned you have to be yeah. over capacity to begin with, so you're already behind the eight ball. Yeah, and it's and not... it takes two more years. Yeah, and, and it's very important for people to understand this is not a knock against the SFB. They've, we've been great partners with them, but they're serving districts all over the state of Arizona, you know, and you can just think about we're one small East Valley community and they have all types of renewal grants they have to manage and growth issues throughout the entire state of Arizona and they're responsible for that. So our standard of building quality schools is we have to take that money from the SFB and couple it with that bond money to, to stay ahead of the to, to stay ahead of the growth. There's no ifs, ands, or but. The, the formula that we use from the, from the state does not have enough money in it for a new construction. Right, so there's not money there for the new construction unless you go out for a bond. That's correct. Um, yeah. So this isn't a question about living within your means, right? The district is not living um, high on the hog and spending money wherever yeah. it can. Yeah, that's a good, I'm glad you brought that up. Sometimes people confuse that. We, uh, we do live within our means and in fact, we do a very good job uh, with that. Um, but the formula doesn't provide new construction money into your budget. We get a capital budget, but it's a very small amount. It's been underfunded for a lot of years. You know, I, I would say that some people feel like, you know, hey, why don't they just find some other source? You know, it costs a lot of money to build schools. Um, there's not enough money in your budget to build a school. Um, it's just the reality. So you got to purchase the land, you got to build the schools. Um, you mentioned the high schools, you build those in phases. That's correct. Um, mm -hmm. So realistically, you're only opening part of the school and then you have to build it out as students arrive, as, as money becomes available. Yeah. Um, so you have this sequence um, yeah. that you're going through. Yeah, we had a phase one, depending on the, what you call a phase one or a phase two, build at Eastmark and now they're at capacity and so to finish that academic wing and that space requirement that's needed for that comprehensive build out you have to finish it with phase three and four. Um, same thing with Crisman um, but the reason you do it like that or you have to do it like that is you don't have enough money coming in from the state and we just have to merge it with the available bond authority to make that work and so it's based on your budget um, on why you do that. I suppose there are some districts that might have enough bond authority to build it out to its completion. We just haven't been there. We've got so many growth problems in the district. It's not just related to the high school, but we need elementary schools. Um, we've, we've got two elementary schools, Chris, up in the north part of our district. Uh, Silver Valley has 1,300 students. I mean, that's, that's a lot of students to put in an elementary school and, and GPA is at 1,000 students. And so the only way you can take the pressure off of that is you put a new school up redesign your attendance boundaries and you balance that enrollment between those three elementary schools and it allows you to absorb that ele elementary growth. So you mentioned um, elementary schools being at 1300 or um, I, I forget what the uh, thousand, thousand at yeah. GPA and so ideally those need to be at 800? Yeah that's ideal those schools are probably built for 880 students at the most and 900 if you're stretching it and so we're over capacity. Same thing with uh, some of the newer schools. Um, we've added some extensions over at Sossaman Elementary, KMBE. Uh, Schnepp is the one that we're waiting uh, uh, with pending bond approval. We're hopefully going to have that bond money to pay for that extension. But they're just opened last year, and they're going to be at capacity next year. So, Right. So we're talking about schools that you just built that yeah. you mm -hmm. um, knew were needed, but not only were they needed, yeah. they filled up beyond um, what was predicted um, yep. just be based on how fast people are moving here. Um, one of the things that I know uh, you talk about is the busing 
um, yeah. situation. So yep. um, right now you have exactly the number of buses that you need. So that is correct. If one goes down, yeah. So right now it's a unique challenge that all districts are facing with driver shortages. We have. Um, we're about 20 drivers short. And so we're using third party transportation companies to supplement our staff so that we can get kids to and from. And we're a unique district, unlike most districts. They all have this challenge, but most of their ridership, the number of students riding buses is actually flatlining or going down. Guess what's happening in Queen Creek? Mm. It's going up every year. We're seeing more and more kids and families choose our transportation teams. And so that's a good problem that shows quality, but we're down to, like you said, down to one of our last buses. So if one breaks or something happens, an accident occurs, then we're uh, at risk of having to combine routes and kids can't get to and from uh, school on time. And so we, uh, in this bond package that we're talking about, we actually have monies in there for for, for buses. And, you know, it, it, it really the priority is really space, but there's a lot of things that come with this bond. For example, the transportation and security. I mean, we have a great secure district. We've done a lot of good things to improve the security of our perimeters. We have single entrance only schools for even we've retrofitted our old schools. And I'm very proud of that, but there's a lot more work to do with security cameras to keep our students and faculty safe. So you got new space, you got buses, you got security issues, you got a lot of things that come with this bond package. So there's uh, two final things I really want to touch on quick. Um, you mentioned uh, portables a couple of times and m and but um, just to clarify, so if you get the portables and you put them on the campuses um, to house those additional students now, um, we're talking four, six, eight portables, yeah. um, the money to maintain those has to come out of m and which correct. then means fewer dollars for teachers. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you for, for clarifying that. Yeah, and just to keep things in perspective, our actual need for portables next year, um, I think it's, don't quote me on this, it's 25 portables that we need. But we're going to try to make do with um, 12, 10 to 12 portables, and this is all pending board approval. But that budget for that 10 to 12 portables is about five to six million dollars. And so if you take a look at what we did for our staff this year with that new monies that came from the governor, we gave a 5% raise to everyone. That cost five or six million dollars. So that's, you're taking money from your M&O to pay for capital um, expenses. Now, one thing I will say about portables, I want to be clear to you and everyone is in a growing district like Queen Creek, we're going to need portables for sure, no matter if you pass the bond or if you don't. Now, the, t the portables will be very temporary in nature if you pass the bond, but just in, to buy you enough time to get your new schools built or your new school built, you're going to need to put some portables up at Silver Valley and GPA possibly for sure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, but as soon as they're, you know, the new school's built, hopefully we'll be able to take that um, portable away. Very good. Um, and so um, one of the final things, um, let's talk about how bonds actually work. So you're asking for 196 million, yeah. 198 million. Um, so um, we say yes, and the next day you get 198 million? No, the way it works is that we work with a bond attorney called Stiefel, and they've, they work with our, bond, our, our board and our staff. And, and that's a, I'm glad you asked that question because that's oftentimes misunderstood is that our board is committed to pacing the sale of those bonds over the next 10 years, okay? So that, what that does is it keeps your tax rate flat or even declining. We have data that shows that our secondary tax rate is actually gonna go down. As you get more people in, we pay off more debt. Um, your assessed valuation goes up. All of those contributing factors are going to see that our secondary tax rate will go down. Now, um, your bond authority is different than your bonding capacity. And I don't want to get in the weeds here, but our authority is to for $198 million, but we're going to pace the sale of those uh, based on our capital needs and our priorities. We need an elementary up ASAP up north, and then we start looking at what do we need second and third. And you only want to spend a certain amount so you can keep that secondary tax rate flat. Does that make sense? Right, so my bill, 
the part that I'm actually paying isn't going to be based on that 198. Um, it'll be based on whatever you've actually spent in those sequences and retiring the past debt. So yeah. essentially, yes. uh, if I understand it right, then uh, my bill stays about the same That's um, great. as where it's been. Yeah. Um, and we're spreading it out over more people. So And sometimes we, people get confused when their tax bill comes in and it's higher, but your value of your home's growing, but they don't always understand the interplay between that secondary tax rate. And so that's something that, um, if you look at the, yes, uh, not, uh, it's the, the bond, bond landing page at the district website, there's some good information in there for the public to look at related to taxes. It's very complicated to explain in a short interview, but there's some really good user-friendly uh, discussions about tax rate. There's actually a property tax calculator that they've got on there where you can plug in your address and see what your property tax will be. So it's our district's attempt to help the community understand the implications with tax rate. And where do we find that? That's at the Queen Creek Unified School District um, webpage and there's a bond link and you go to the bond link and then it brings you to a landing page or a website basically for all vetted uh, factual information about the bond what the schools get, what's in the bond package, the tax rate information. There's like 10 to 12, I think, uh, frequently asked questions that we field from the community. All of that's in there with the responses and it's all vetted by attorneys. So um, I don't know the, off the top of my head, I don't know the, the, the URL, but it's from the website for Queen Creek Unified School District. Very good. Dr. Barry, thank you for joining us oh, today. Thank you, Chris. Thank we you for everything you do and uh, appreciate you having me on here. And if there's anything we can do to help or clarify, please don't hesitate to reach out to them.